Circus 5 to Mama. Circus 5 to Mama. We're at E18 along the escarpment. Two caves, two heavy machine guns. Over. No, sir, the way they sit, planes can't dig them out. We can. Over. Oh, no, sir, no reinforcements necessary. Request permission to attack. Over. Aye, aye, sir. Well, maybe those caves are part of the Jap line. Maybe they're just sucker bait. We'll soon find out, Sergeant. With what? With 18 men? No, I may get 15 now. Well, 15 then. And no mortars. Grenades and bang bags? You ever tried to dig them out before? No. No, we did over in Tulago. Took two platoons and it was still a mess. You've had plenty of practice. Lieutenant, people get killed, okay. But at least let it count for something. We don't need this. We can flank those caves. They aren't stopping anybody. They're stopping me. That's a fact, Sergeant. It's your platoon, what's left of it. Sergeant. The orders said fill out the Jap line. I read them we had a full platoon when they were cut. But the orders are still cut. Nobody called off the war. Now's our chance to show the big man in battalion how good we are. I'm not that ambitious. I'm no kidding. Let me tell you something, Sloan. Let me tell you about the war. You know what the war is? I never read the books. Well, I read the books. The war is the key to the city. We make it here, we got it made back home. So we make it big here. Or not at all. And we're all heroes. Only I'm a lieutenant hero, and you're a sergeant hero. When you keep on giving me arguments, I'm gonna shoot you dead. Now, you write that in the blackboard 50 times. Where's Johnny Campbell? Over there. Jap guns are in our lock. How are we gonna get at them? Just watch them. We gotta wait for reinforcements. What for? They only got two machine guns. Take it like it comes. You think they'll come down? Why? It's nice up there. It's a great replacement, that Brady. We ain't been cut up bad enough. He's gotta find this. That's great influence. Jap army don't make a move without it. Take it easy, boy. Like Joe Brady says, it's gonna be a long war. Everybody's gonna get killed. Except him. Squad leaders here. In. All right, two fire teams right and left. Grenades, satchel charges, two teams to cover, and move up.
I think we lost him. You think? You got X-ray eyes or something? For what? All dead for what? All right, John, don't move around. I'm getting out of here. The moon goes in in an hour, so do we. I don't take orders from you. Not anymore. Nobody's handing you a free choice. Now sit down. We split this circle three ways. Rise, Oven. Sorry about your friends. We took the caves, didn't we? Sure, we took them. For two big minutes. I couldn't figure the reinforcements. And why did you make us go up there? All right, Johnny. To hear me, Lieutenant? What are they dead for? To get your name in the papers? Why aren't you dead? Something's out there. Maybe it's your platoon. I want to see you blow up green and stink like they're going to stink. I thought it was a jack. People argue with you. You shoot him dead. That's right. I did the noise. Slow. You know he was pulling out. I told him not to you move. You told him and you got him down like garbage. You want to let some jack climb in with us? You wanted to know why aren't you dead? You must have a real glory waiting for you. You had a wife in New Zealand. Died on the escarpment. You want his wife to know any different, you tell her. You got a good heart. Sloan, he disobeyed orders. If we get back and you try and make any trouble over this, well, you'll be in the sling, not me. You're gonna shoot me too, Lieutenant. Lieutenant Brady, that newspaper fellow's looking for him. In the command tent. Thank you, Sergeant. We, we took the caves, all right. Eight of us got through that. Hello, Colonel. Are you Brady? I'm Sam Pelgrim, newspapers. Here they gave you a pretty rough time of it. Sam's all right. You will let the lieutenant finish his report, huh? Oh, sure, sure. Go right ahead. Oh. Yeah. Traps must have signaled for reinforcements. They hid us right here on top of the escarpment. Mortars, a lot of infantry. How many? Well, I don't know about a company. We tried to get back to the jungle. Right on the edge of it, we lost Brodsky and Enfield and Campbell. Traps got the caves back. All right, Lieutenant, you did your best. Would you uh, put your name and home address on this for me? How many men you go into action with? Eighteen. Uh huh. How many got back? Two. They were fine men, all of them. It's been a privilege, Lieutenant.
Check with you later, Colonel. Okay, Lieutenant, go dig yourself a hole for a few days, and then we'll see if we can't find you a company command. Thank you, sir. Sergeant. Sloan, this is Major Westerly, Battalion Intelligence. Now, one more thing, sir. Sergeant Sloan is a fine Marine. Guts and brains. I'd like to recommend him for a commission in the field. So noted. I suppose you know the details of your lieutenant's report. Is there anything else you can help us with? No, sir. Nothing. I'm uh, sorry you had to wait, Sergeant. You better get that arm fixed. My Jeep's outside. I'll have the driver run you down to the field hospital. Lieutenant, in case I don't see you again. You'll be seeing me. Now, look, boy, I did you a favor in there. You were right, Brady. A sergeant doesn't have enough juice to hang a charge on an officer. All right, Sloan, I want to give you a piece of advice. Done is done. What happened today, don't carry it on your back. I'll carry it long enough to make it even for Campbell and the others. I'm going to take those bars and cut you wide open with them. Lieutenant, you checked onto this job exactly three minutes ago. Wouldn't you call this application for transfer a little premature? No, sir. The Marine Corps would appreciate it if you'd try to go along with us. We happen to be planning a rather important operation here. You want your combat officers on the line. You know, son, what we need are a few more officers like you. That way we could do all our fighting with second lieutenants. We wouldn't need the Japs. What's your name? Sloan, sir. Sloan? Mine's Keller. General? You're going to get all the combat you can eat. Here's your quarters, Lieutenant. Any questions? No, sir. Welcome, friend. I take this? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Gabe. Oh, man. Ain't she something? Hey, buddy, look at that. Ain't she something, hmm? Baby, baby, can I have you, hmm? Because if I can't have you, ain't nobody's gonna have you. You know why, honey? Because I'm just gonna cut off that treacherous little old head. So perish all the enemies of Lou Gideon. Hey, buddy boy, where you from? Oh, I came down from Auckland. Man, we sure got us a cushy job working for that general. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna learn me how to run a war. And then I'm going into business for myself. And the first thing I'm gonna do is declare war on the whole United States Marines. That's what I'm gonna do. Waterford somewhere near here? Well, about 20 miles. Buddy, it sure has been a big pleasure talking to you. Oh, I'm Tom Sloan. And you better sleep good, Gideon, because I'm going to come home to Runk. Hey, you need some help? No, not this time.
you wait in there, please? I'll get Mrs. Campbell. Thank you. Yes? I'm Ruth Campbell. I was a friend of your husband's, Mrs. Campbell. My name is Sloan, Tom Sloan. Won't you sit down? You'll be wanting a drink after you drive. What can I give you? Thank you, nothing. Huh? Oh, hello, Dad. This is my father, Mr. Nelson, Lieutenant Sloan. Yes. How do you do, sir? The lieutenant was a friend of Johnny's. Thank you for coming. You weren't in his platoon. Yes, I was. We weren't aware there were two of you came out of it. Well, you were pretty lucky. I was there when the outfit got into trouble. We were told about the caves. I took these, Mrs. Campbell. This is the first chance I've had. Thank you. Dad, uh, why don't you take the lieutenant out on the terrace? I'll be out in just a minute. I hope it wasn't wrong bringing those things now. Ice. Please. Daughter's very lovely. Yes, isn't she? I had a son, Richard. He was killed in the Libyan desert. Johnny's death. Was it a necessary thing? I mean, taking those caves. Was it important? I wouldn't know. Maybe we won the war right there. Lovely place you have here, sir. Friends call me Casey. Yes, it's quite a large station. Ranch, you'd call it. You know about our work out here? Back home, I sold restaurant equipment. You must have sold it very well. As a matter of fact, I didn't. And how do you feel about this job? Well, I guess the thing about a war, Casey, is that you shouldn't feel anything. Will you say goodbye to Mrs. Campbell for me? I had hoped you'd stay to dinner. Well, no, thank you. I... Lovely this time of day. I was just asking our guests to stay to dinner. Would you? Yes, I'd like that very much. Well, then come have a look around. Johnny wrote about you. An honest guy, he said. He liked you. In our kind of business, we only get to know part of people. Best part. Tell me. It wasn't a waste for Johnny to die. No. Will you be going back to the fighting? Sooner or later, I'll be in Wellington for a while. Then you'll come again. Yes, if you'll let me.
Ruth, do you ever come into Wellington? No, not since... everything I want is here. Well, now you got a reason. Come and see a friend. My family tells me I should get out more. I think so. Isn't he lovely? And did you show him all the beastly cows? <laughs> this brazen creature is my sister Paula. This is Tom's Sloan. Yes, Father told me. I hope you like it here. We're terribly rich. <laughs> Please make allowances for it. Well, thanks, I'll uh, try to be broad-minded. Uh, come see who I caught in town. He's staying the night, you know. Hello, Sloan. How's the arm? Would anybody like a drink? I think I'll dress first, Joel. You two do know each other. So we know each other. Well, yes, we're old comrades. Why don't you two run along? Well, yes, sir. Obviously, our presence is not required during male shop talk. In single file. Oh. And what are you doing here, Captain Brady? Asked the surprised young lieutenant. I came to pay my respects a few weeks ago. What did you tell them about Johnny Campbell's death? Let them believe you were Johnny's friend. Yes. It started that way. We hope some of you boys will stay on here in New Zealand after the war. It can be a good life, you know. Yes, I'm sure, sir. I've got to be getting back. Oh, can't you stay a little longer? Well, I'd like to, but I must go. You'll come again? I'll try, Casey. Thank you for everything. Good night. Good night. Let's take a walk. Thank you. I'd like to talk to you, Brady. Well, then talk to him. The American dream boy, onward and upward. Boy, you really move in strong. I pay my way. Riding first class, riding Johnny's corpse. Johnny Campbell is dead. The truth won't bring him back. And what did you come here for? The same reason you did. One difference. You killed him. It was an accident. I was there, remember? Yeah, sure, you were there. You hated my gut so bad, you believed whatever you wanted to believe. I know that pure, simple mind of yours can't dig this deep, but for what it's worth, what happened to Campbell didn't sit so well with me either. For the right payoff, I'd throw the whole outfit in the fire and I'd be with him, because that's the business. But Campbell was a waste. So I came here for the first time to see what I had to see. They were so eager to believe he died for something important. I let him believe it. And then... Then I met Paula. Must be tough, a sensitive soul like you. That family fortune must have brought tears to your eyes. You got it all figured out, haven't you? I'm the bad cowboy and you're the good one. But I can give these people what they want and all you can do is make trouble for them and good cowboys don't make trouble for people. Now you ride on out of here and think that over. Leave these people alone, Brady. You stay out of their lives. I like.
like our new lieutenant. It was very gracious of him to come. Well, then, why don't you ask him back? You've been seeing a lot of Joe Brady, haven't you? How much is a lot? Well, it's more than enough. On any day, he might be gone. Or killed or something. I didn't mean that. Well, I meant it. Oh, Ruth, everything can't be judged by Johnny and Richard. It's just not right, that's all. Just... Just try to stay young, darling. As long as you can. Sit. And you work. Now, there's a briefing session on the nature of your work here. For some of you more bloodthirsty types, it may seem dull or unnecessary. I promise you, neither is the case. Now, down the Guadalcanal is secured. That gives us a handhold on the Solomons. New Guinea coming our way. The problem to eventually attack the Japanese home islands. All right, how and when? That's the game. Uh, perhaps Lieutenant Sloan will be good enough to play it with us. Give us all the benefit of his battle experience. To Japan, Lieutenant. Well, I suppose that Never we... suppose. That way you lose. Uh, we'd strike due north. Truck. Saipan, Guam, the Marianas. One of these islands here, like Iwo Jima. From there, we could bomb direct and stage an invasion. All right. Now, mark your line of supply. That's fine. You just made the enemy a present of your right flank. Your lines are cut. Bomb from here and here, the Marshall Islands and the Gilberts. You lost the game, Lieutenant. Now you and all your armies are dead. I hope, gentlemen, you will now understand the urgency and importance of the operation we'll prepare together. I ask you to consider the enemy's position in the Gilbert Islands, specifically the Atoll of Tarawa. Hello! Excuse me. Hello? I know the children's hour. Waiting for Ruth. But I'll buy you lemonade. <laughs> oh, I can't. Gotta run. You haven't seen much of Joe Brady. Mm. Why? Just curious. <laughs> you don't like him very much, do you? Oh, we had some trouble once. Oh, yes. I know. He told you? <sighs> no, not really. Anyway. I leave you with just one good thought. Be good to Ruthie. She needs you. Want to eat at the hotel? Oh, no. Somewhere else, hmm? I saw Tom Sloan downstairs. Tom Sloan? The man who plays God. Well, now, whatever it is, you two fix things up. He's getting very, very serious about Ruth, you know. Is he really? Joel, what is it? What happened between you two? That's a professional difference of opinion. He thinks she can win a war by hoping for the best. And I don't. Is it so important? Well, we're a very close family. We wouldn't want to go spoil that now, would you? All right, everything will be fine. Don't worry about it. You will fix things up with him. I'll fix things. Evil, my hearties. Never lend things to strangers. 
strangers. Oh, oh, what an adventure. I'll get lost in you for years. A drink? Can you manage it? Permit me, ma'am. Say, ma'am, you want to kiss me right now, or you want to wait till he takes off, huh? Little giddy in the Tennessee Troubadour. <laughs> oh, of course. Won't you join us, Lou? Well, no, I can't. I got a, I got a date over there. Oh. Oh, which one's yours? Well, I haven't decided which one yet. <laughs> I suggest the blonde. Is that the inside information? Well, no guarantees. Ma'am, guarantees ain't no fun. Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> It's just what I've been waiting for, a nice, intimate rendezvous. Could we escape, please? They've been planning something big at headquarters, haven't they? Sure, always. Will you have to go? Joel, too, I suppose. It's all such fun and games at the hotel bar. Ruth. When I get back... Tom, don't... No, it isn't gonna stop for us, not so easy. Tom, I've had that, all of it. The high spirits and the brave plans. Now, I just don't want to think about what's going to be. Can't you understand that? An amphibious force floats on an ocean of detail. Follow it up in the planning stages and you've lost the game before it starts. Now my job is to make the big plans. You do the little ones. Right down to the last cartridge and mess kit. From now until the first shot is fired, you'll be fighting one enemy, time. And there'll never be enough. How do you get 20,000 tons of equipment into a 15,000 ton ship? That's easy, you phone it in. Hey, you know, I've got six quarts of water per man per day. Me suppose that's right? Never suppose, Gideon. That way you lose. How dare you, sir? How dare you? In battle, a Gideon never loses his water. Hey, there. All that cattle eating all that grass is a problem. Why? Why isn't the milk green? <laughs> well, people wouldn't buy it. That's why we color it white. Ah, trade secrets. Don't tell anybody. You getting hungry? I couldn't stand that force march back to the house. Well, this just happens to be a secret supply base. Oh, no. <laughs> that is what I call logistics. I'm a cold calculator. You know, we could use planners like you back at headquarters. You ever consider a military career? You recruiting lieutenants? Only for my personal staff. Tom, Tom, shall we make a deal, you and I? Sounds ominous. Well, that's the way the truth is these days. I've discovered two very important truths. Nothing's very permanent, and that life goes on. I've decided I want to be a part of that. I've no objection to being kissed by you. In fact, I rather liked it, and I expect you'll do it again. You are psychic. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, let me finish. Whatever our relationship, and we're starting to have one, I want you to know how I feel about... about this new life of mine. I'll enjoy being with you if you want me. I want to be wanted again. When we're apart, I shan't think of you ever. I don't want any more illusion. I want it to be all substance and temporary, and no commitments. And that's my deal. It's all pretty physical, isn't it? It's a physical world. Maybe that's an illusion, too. I'll live with that illusion. What if we fall in love? I won't let us. I'm gonna try to make it that way, Ruth. 
then I'll hate you for it. Beef or cheese? You never wanted any part of this job, did you? No, sir. Field commission. Big combat man. Okay, son. Majuro and the loyalty group. The Japs have it. Same defense problems as Tarawa. Same materials to work with. Air reconnaissance shows machine gun pillboxes building along the south coast. The second regiment sending a company in to take a look around. A night raid. You're going with them. When? Destroyer leaves the North Island base at 1800 tomorrow. As long, I want a complete rundown on those pillboxes. Depth, thickness, construction details, anything. It'll help us at Tarawa. Who do I report to? Captain Brady's in charge. He asked for you. Man, some guys get to have all the fun. Tell me, how did a schlepper like you ever get to be one of Keller's commandos? Well, they're grooming me for commander in chief. Well, in that case, I would be delighted to treat you to a personal bash this evening. Kind of a last drink before you get your head blown off. Uh, no thanks, kid. I got a date. Well, I'll get me one, too. No, not tonight. Well, you seeing Ruth? Yeah. I guess she wouldn't care too much for the type of girl I mess around with. But they're good enough for a guy like me. Hey, you know something? You know the Crown Hotel? I've been spending so much time up there, that desk clerk, he asked me to write to him after the war. Uh, look, uh, Gid, uh, could you pack the rest of this junk for me? I got to go pick up some briefing. Sure, man. Good boy. Hello, Tom. Oh. But I told the desk clerk. Yes, yes, I'll be checking out in the morning. Yes, you're quite welcome. Your plans have changed. Held up at headquarters. You staying over? Well, it's your last night and all. I, I was afraid it might be too late for me to drive home. You wound up tight as wives. <laughs> well, then pour us a drink. The bottle's on the dresser. Finally got our intimate rendezvous. Neat, but not gaudy. You know this little side trip of mine doesn't amount to much. I'll be back before the big one. <laughs> well, then we'll have another party. Well, uh, here's to the Marines. Ruth, what are you trying to do? Guess I'm not doing it very well, am I? thought it was what you wanted. Sure thing, a little something for the troops after the war, fun, farewell. Compliments of the Hotel Crown. Oh, no, not like that. Like what, then? Well, I... I just wanted us to be together. Yeah, everything free and easy and no strings. That's our deal, isn't it? Because once you fell in love and now he's dead. Tom, don't... No, you hear the rest of it. There's a lot more gonna go with Johnny before this war's finished. But when they hose off the blood, the world will still be there, and maybe I will, too. And I want a lot more out of it than a quick shack up in a two-bit hotel. Oh, Tom, I, I want it too, but I... Afraid. I'm so afraid. That's the admission fee, honey, being afraid. Nobody gets there for nothing.
Will you marry me? Lieutenant Sloan? That's right. I'm Sergeant Anderson, the photographer. Headquarters sent me up to work with you. Uh, good. You're an artist, too, huh? Oh, <laughs> you know. Hey, by the way, Captain Brady wants to see you as soon as you come aboard, sir. Come in. Well, Lieutenant Sloan, welcome to the SS Titanic. Close the door. It's nice to be working together again. Or wouldn't you say? I figured it'd be the last one you'd want. Well, I thought about that. I thought about that a lot. But the war, like the man says, comes first. And you being such a good man... We I... don't line up that good. What are you pitching for, Brady? Well, I thought I might get myself killed this trip and solve all your problems. And then I thought, fair is fair. My old buddy Sloan ought to have the same opportunity. You ought to do something about those nerves, boy. You almost spoiled our celebration. Paul and I were married today. So you finally made it. I wonder if it ever entered that noble mind of yours that I could be in love with Paula. No, I never did. Sloan. Guadalcanal is over. Now, if you want to go on mourning Johnny Campbell's death, that's your privilege. But remember, his being dead bought you that fancy time you're having with his widow. I should have shot you in the jungle. Well, I hope you got film in those cameras. Well, don't worry about me, Lieutenant. Cameras, guns, names, I shoot everything in sight. <laughs> Number one, both ready, Lieutenant. Let's go. Ten. You know the layout? Coming on high rocks, probably unfriended. From there, it's about a quarter mile to the pillbox. And, uh, good luck. up here. He's a photographer. Why, you want your picture taken? There's your pill boxes. Get what you need before somebody calls the cops. I'll cover. Hey, hey, take it easy. 
easy, huh? <laughs> Make it fast, Professor. Tank's moving up. Uh, don't rush me. I'm an artist. You know, I may just wait around for a sunny day. All right, get him out of here. Back to the boats. What about the lieutenant and that camera guy? They'll be along. I'll stick. Hold on. Hold on. All set, Lieutenant. Get going. You, in a minute. Alongside, sir. Okay, secure it. Anytime you're ready, Mac. All on? All is coming. Thanks for the assist. Pleasure. Second boat secured, sir. Okay, take her out. You uh, get everything you wanted? You never get everything. One way or another, they all die for you, don't they, Brady? I thought you were dead. I'm Anderson, I left him there like you tried. I couldn't wait for you. The second boat waited. Oh, it's funny. All this time, I never thought I'd have the guts to kill you, Cole. It's all right, son. We're just, uh, we're just playing a little game, good cowboy and bad cowboy. Skipper wants to see you on the bridge, Lieutenant. Right away. Radio room reports PBY ready for landing. Tell them to go ahead and let us know when they're down. Yes, sir. Got a signal for you, Lieutenant. It's your first Lieutenant T. Sloan, AD Camp General N. Keller. That's new, isn't it? What? Here. That's your transportation up there. I'll be setting down in a few minutes. You've been ordered to Pearl Harbor. General Keller will meet you there. Good luck, Lieutenant. I could judge the walls were about three feet thick. I saw a tank shell bounce off one of them. All it did was tear them up a little. Was the concrete reinforced? I couldn't tell, sir. How deep were they sunk? Oh, five feet, another five feet of dirt and iron piled on top. Well, Harry, you're the gunnery officer. That's what we can expect to find at Tarawa. What do you think? Well, we've got the planes and the guns to stage the heaviest bombardment in history. Tarawa's not much bigger than a couple of city blocks. There's a good chance we can knock those boxes out before the Marines hit the beach. So depending on the number of direct hits. Yes, sir, exactly. Uh, the Secretary would like to know how many direct hits we can definitely count on. Tell the Secretary we can definitely count on none. That's why he has a Marine Corps. Same time tomorrow, gentlemen. Thank you, Lieutenant.
All right, you did fine. You ought to finish up here in a day or two, and then we'll join the convoy at Base X. I thought we were going back to Wellington. No time. Why? I made out some charge papers today. They have to be filed there against another Marine, an officer. What's the charge? The murder of an enlisted man in battle back at Guadalcanal. Well, you took your sweet time, didn't you? I had to. You had anything to say? Why didn't you say it when it happened? I was an enlisted man. My word against an officer is it wouldn't have done any good. You could have let the Marine Corps decide what good it would have done. I intend to let the Corps do just that. One of my officers? Yes. You know what you're doing, Tom? Things happen in battle. Sometimes you can't be sure. I'm sure. Well, you've got a job to do, and you'll have to hold your papers till we get back. A mess like that. You better have plenty of proof, or you'll be the man on the hook. And you've still got the job. to each square yard. Well, what more could we do? First wave moving up the line of departure on schedule.
Sand. This is Brady, Red 2, over. Request supporting fire on pillboxes at map area 3265 X-ray. Over. They can't move. They're pinned down at the seawall all along Red Beach. Second wave land yet? Part of it, but some of them are hung up on the reef. They're walking in under fire. Well, we weren't counting on any miracles. It isn't the game anymore, is it, Lieutenant? It's people, people on the beach. And we're going to ask them to go right on dying. Time to keep going. Spend the rest of your lives in this stinking beach? Hey, I'm in fire spot right and left. Let's try him again. Boxes west of the pier. Who's on his right wing? D Company, still pinned down. Uh, who's got it? Lou Gideon took over. He's dead now. <sighs> okay. Somebody's got to pull the plug. Go on and take the company. See if you can move him up on Brady's flank. Frank. Hi, Ice. Boxes on the left. We're moving up to his flank. So we've been trying all morning. They nail everything that moves. Okay, they can't hear what they can't see. Are there any mortars around here? Plenty. All Japanese. All right, we'll try a blind drop with rifle grenades. Four men, white phosphorus, and see if you can dig me up a satchel charge. Aye, aye, sir. Fly, man. Here. What's your name? Fanty, sir. All right, stick around, Fanty. We're going to need you. Fredrickson, one. Who's on your right, Corporal? Captain Stacy, B Company. I'll get him on that thing and tell him we're moving up next to Brady's position. Yes, sir. Red Martha 2. Red Martha 2. Falling back to their second line. Well, we got 50 yards, boy. That's a day's work. Red 2 1, this is Red 2 2. Do you read me? Red 2 1, this is Red 2 2. Over. You raised Brady's company? 
No, sir, nothing on the left at all. Keep trying. Lieutenant, I don't think anybody's there anymore. Those monkeys are planning a counterattack. The left flank is hanging in the air. Now I'll have a look for Brady's people. Keep a watch for the nips when it's light. Yes, sir. be the general of this army. When it quiets down, get out and dig yourself some positions you can defend. Mr. Lieutenant, if you're looking for the captain, why don't you try that pillbox over there? <laughs> Position. There's a counterattack coming. Get out and get him in line. Just kids out there. Get out and get him in line. I can't. I'm sorry. You're sorry. Brave Joe Brady finally ran out of steam. Maybe you just never had anything to lose before. What is it with guys like you? You chopped up the whole platoon, Johnny Campbell. That never gave you a bad minute. Then you hit the beach like you're the whole team and fight. And this? And you finally found something to be sorry for. necessary for this day's work. What difference does it all make? Last thing at Pearl, I made out your charge papers for Campbell. What difference does that make either? Does any of it make except to live? Break. <laughs> Where's my company? Over there, what's left? They got us registered. You over the shakes? Everybody's entitled.
Some parlay, huh? You and me? A good cowboy and a, a desperado. He's gonna love those court martial charges of yours. Counterattack's been beaten off, sir. Whole Japanese second line has opened fire again. All right, we'll hit them while they're still sad. Signal all battalions. All battalions, beach red. Move up. All battalions, beach red. Move up. Move up. Move up. All battalions, beach red. Move up. Move up. Move up. Nobody moves. They wait. Like they waited yesterday for me. And everybody goes. What about today, Hotshot? You tell me. Who's going to lead the glorious charge? You used up all your mileage. You got me fake it cold, huh? But you don't know anything. You still think those caves on Guadalcanal were a waste, but that's where they went through on the last big push. And you think I shot Johnny Cable just because he talked rough and I married Paula for her dough and I left you to die in the Jordan Island because she knew about me. Well, who the hell are you to judge? You don't even know that men like me make this war. You going up? Why don't you just keep on figuring? And you make all the charges against me you want because that's all you've got are a lot of charges and no proof. Making a deal, Brady, one big bang for a clean slate. Why should I? I don't have to be afraid of you. Everybody loves the man who wins the war. You won't make 20 yards. You want a bet? See that jack pillbox over there? Well, you keep your eyes on it. Because I'm going to bust this battle wide open. <laughs> Posthumous Medal of Honor. You knew him pretty good. Nobody knows anybody, General. It's a fact. You want the word out of Brady. Maybe it's guys like him win the wars. Maybe they start him. I don't know. Okay, sir. Okay. 